Good afternoon and welcome to this breakout session. I'm Jean Shafroff, a former board member of New York Women's Foundation. Today I serve on seven boards. I'm a TV host and also the author of the book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. New York Women's Foundation is near and dear to my heart and I remain very active. This breakout session is designed to highlight two very special honorees, Amanda Farinacci and Kristen Shaughnessy, and they are both with us here today. And I am truly honored to introduce both of them and tell you a little bit about them. Amanda has had a 20 year career as a reporter in Staten Island and all over New York City. She has led many criminal investigations and many other top news stories. Our other guest, Kristen Shaughnessy, has had a career in journalism as a host and as a reporter uh, um, in the world of journalism for the last 30 plus years. She has received many awards for her journalism. So has Amanda. I'd like to welcome both ladies. And Amanda, I want to start with you. You've done so much for women. And when you look back on your career, can you talk a little bit about the age discrimination and gender d discrimination that you experienced? So uh, first, I want to say thank you so much to everyone um, for participating in this morning's event. It was really, really a uh, a, a tremendous honor and a spectacular event. And um, so I, I know I speak on behalf of, of um, all of my friends when I say that we are so grateful to be here and to receive this distinct honor. Um, I, I prefer not to speak about the specifics of the experience that I had, but I think it would be fair to say that um, we are all here as a group of like-minded women. We are sharp as tacks and we um, have, uh, a lot of observational skills and gut instincts that I think we need to pay more attention to and we need to uh, listen to our um, our gut instincts. I think as women, we um, in the workplace, we are used to, you know, um, tolerating a, a little bit of nonsense. Um, and I, I always like joke and say like women have higher constitutions, like we can take a lot of BS and, and men maybe perhaps um, don't take as much. But I think um, as my friend Kristen likes to say, like once you see it, you can't unsee it. So um, there's something that's different about um, different types of discrimination that make you feel something and that you need to intuitively um, lean in to that and sort of explore what you think that means because um, the reality is it is more difficult for a woman um, in a workplace. I think we could be fair to say blanket statement in any workplace. Um, you know, there's challenges presented by having families, by um, getting ahead, financial wage gap, there's um, the difficulties run the gamut. And so um, I think that, you know, just sort of the, the general way to say uh, what you do when you think something might be happening is really just try to listen to yourself because I do believe that it is the kind of experience that once you have the inkling that something like that might be happening to you, it's very hard to shake that um, and and you need to sort of lean into what what proper steps um, need to, 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 to take place next. And uh, Kristen, do you care to discuss some of your experiences? mostly so that others can learn from them. And, and we learn by hearing other people's stories. Yeah, I, I'm with Amanda. Thank you so much again for this honor. I just wanna echo Amanda there. We, we both prefer not to talk about our case, um, but we are happy to talk about ways that women can protect themselves and also uh, just the different things that you can look out for and that type of thing. So one of the things that Amanda had said was just kind of that gut check that you have, that intuition that uh, something might be up. So I would say to a woman, um, and this is just speaking generally, if you know, if you suspect something is awry in your workplace, you you should start documenting, you should start time stamping things, you should listen to conversations, write those conversations down, say who had those conversations. Um, if you know the rules in your state, you should record those conversations if it is allowed. Um, those are all things you can do to protect yourself down the road. Um, and you also want to talk to other women. 
Let's see, because a lot of times when discrimination happens in a workplace, a woman is is inclined to think it's just her. You know, it's just happening to her and there must be something with her ability at her job or, you know, it may be designed to make you think that you're not doing a good job when in fact you're working your butt off. Um, and when you start talking to other people, you get an idea if, if something else is awry. Does someone see something happening to you or is it happening to them? Um, it's just really good to communicate with each other. I think that's, you know, that's very important and it would make a, a woman not feel so, so alone. And let me ask both of you, how can we eliminate a gender discrimination and age discrimination? I've got a good one for this, Amanda. If you, yes. I, just, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I, I think I'll let Amanda talk right after this, but I think more diversity at the top is essential. Um, if you look in the boardrooms or at the top uh, of almost any company, you will find a lot of older white men. Um, and that's not, this is nothing against older white men at all, but you need people of different genders, different religions, different races, different lived experiences. That's all very important. And I think until that happens, we're not going to see a lot of change um, because you need that diversity and that collection of voices to make change possible. And I think to the other part of that um, is, and I think as we we just witnessed in this, in this uh, amazing work of all the women who, who were honored this morning, I mean, you need female voices, not not just at the top, but female voices who talk about the things they've gone through, who have, you know, shared experiences, not with just their their little cluster of five or their cluster of ten or whatever, but like women who are who are publicly saying, "This is what's happened to me. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I believe." You know, continuing to bang the drum on um, the you know issues that we face because I mean, I think one thing I have learned about this experience, even just, you know, as a, as a woman who really wasn't very involved in women's issues um, for most of my life, is that when you talk to other women, you can, you probably only need to say five to 10 words before another woman sitting next to you says to you, that happened to me too. That absolutely happened to me too. And so um, there is a lot to be said for the idea of power in these conversations and then the the strength of a group to say these are the things that we have all seen and shared and and we we need a plan of action or uh, we need to raise collectively our voices i think those are really important i think to kristen's point it need there's stuff that needs to happen inside companies to sort of diversify to get more women in these places but among the rank and file women you really really need to talk to each other because those shared experiences are so valuable and so common for for everyone and, and to piggyback off that too, Amanda, you raise a good point. When you speak to each other, you know, I think it's important for women to support other women, right? Like we just looked at what happened to Liz Cheney. Uh, she was, and I'm not getting political here. I'm just saying as a woman, there was a bit of sexism and maybe even ageism that, that played a part in that. She was an older woman who was speaking up against, you know, mostly male leadership. I think she's the only female leader there or was. And then they substituted her with another woman. Now, if all the women had stood up, and said, we're not gonna take this, that would have had a very different thing. You're not gonna substitute one woman for another woman. We won't let that happen, but they didn't. And that would have been a powerful statement if they had been able to do that. But you will find a lot of women will not stand up, whether they're scared, which is completely understandable, that's fine, but there is power in numbers. No question. And Women's New York Women's Foundation is all about empowering women and also supporting one another. I think it's really, really key. Now, a lot of people don't realize that the Equal Rights Amendment is not part of the United States Constitution. And so this is something I think we all need to work towards having changed. And so when we don't have an Equal Rights Amendment, uh, situations like pay parity and, and, and gender equality in the workplace, I don't see how they can happen. And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think ageism is the last ism that's like accepted, right? Um, I think like, you know, there are for that, to your point about the equal, um, uh, equality, the, about the act, that, that things that are, are considered against the law, um, you know, there are subtle biases that we don't even realize when you, you know, like when you say to somebody, hey, you look great for 75, like, 
<laughs> it's not that you look great for 75, you just look great. How about you just look great? But these are the subtle biases that are, um, you know, have been sort of woven into the fabric of our culture and how we speak to each other, how we interact with each other. So, um, you know, you have to start somewhere. You have to start by having the conversations. You have to start by being mindful of what you say. Your words have power. Your actions obviously have more power. But but all of the subtle ways that um, these kinds of biases have become normalized makes them that much harder to remove from our everyday conversation with people. And so that's really the challenge is, is, um, is having conversations with people that point out these you know, unintentional biases, but also raise awareness to them so that you maybe become more mindful of the next time you want to say, hey, you look great, right? Like you, you just say it instead of aging it. <laughs> <laughs> I think age discrimination is something that everyone in this world faces, but women much more than men based on everything I've read. Men seem to age gracefully and women seem to age out, which is not a good thing. And as we conclude this session, and of course, I want to thank everybody for joining today. And I want to thank Anna Oliveri and congratulate all of our honorees, all the board members and all our grantee partners for being involved. But as we conclude, I want to ask one more question. And that is, if you were a young person just starting out, what advice would you give to a young woman, uh, maybe in your situation or in another area of um, the workplace, what advice do you give? Gonna go again? Okay. Okay. Um, I would just say, you know, be aware of what happens. I think younger women now are more aware than maybe we were. I think, you know, every generation you learn a little bit more. So that's, that's hopeful. Um, but you also have to be willing to speak up and speak out and, and, and maybe take an unpopular stance and that's okay. Um, but I, I think they really need to talk about their salaries and sometimes companies don't allow that, but it is the only way that women are going to get ahead is if, you know, we, we just talked about the pay disparity that happens, uh, you know, to the dollar compared to what men earn. The only way that's going to happen is if you start sharing salaries, that's the only way you're going to be able to negotiate in a more, on a more even playing field. So that would probably be my big advice. And I would just say, open your eyes. Like, you know, we all we all start out at the beginning, right? We're all interns at some point. We all have our first job. We all have, you know, our second. We, we all run the gamut. All of these experiences are unique to us, but they are universal for, you know, the duration of people's lives. And so um, I think it's important to, for as a younger woman, to lean on uh, women who have more experience with, than they do and to be humble and to learn those lessons and to um, uh, appreciate the experiences of those who have come before you. I think that there needs to be more partnership between um, younger, so it's not like the old women are pitted against the young women. Like, again, I was, a certain age before I started somewhere. I had a first day, I had a first job, I had an internship. Um, and so I think that, you know, to my younger self, I would say just really keep your eyes open because, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of things are um, challenged. Uh, women face a lot more challenges and obstacles in the workplace than a man does ever. It's just a fact. And um, there are tools around there and there are resources that can help you navigate, but you really just have to, you know, go into each situation with your eyes open and rely on, on the experiences of, and the mentorship of people who have come before you to help you steer your ship a little bit. I think that those are my younger self, perhaps. If I was beginning my career. Uh, yes, and I think it's very important um, for women to mentor other women, younger women, and that really is going off the conversation but new york women's foundation is a group that is intended and what we do is support and help other women now as a woman gets a little older i think one of the things that we all need to do is show dignity and respect and understand that women teach women and women have to support women because someday the younger women will be older and we'll be in a situation, the same situation, if we don't change things. So I think we all have an obligation right now to work on making every effort to change uh, these old attitudes about age 
and then we have to change uh, the discrimination against uh, women and we actually have to change all discrimination racial dis discrimination gender discrimination um, uh, sexual discrimination all sorts of discrimination and this is the objective of New York Women's Foundation. And Amanda and uh, Christian, I want you to uh, give us with some, leave us with some parting words, some words of advice. We'd love to hear your suggestions again. And Kristen? Sure. I need a minute I, to think. <laughs> I just, you know, going off what you said, Amanda, I think, you know, and someone wrote in the comments, lift it as we climb. I think that's perfect because we all start somewhere and we're all going to end up somewhere. but. You know, people are living longer these days, so you really have to embrace institutional knowledge and experience. That's something that the workplace has to start embracing just in general. Um, and I think, you know, we all know what it's like to start out. And of course, you want to be supportive of younger employees and, and younger colleagues because they're going to be you someday and, and you want to be able to teach. And, you know, so I, I think at all levels, you just have to support each other as women instead of kind of fighting against each other for the one or two spots that are available, because that's not going to get us anywhere. Yeah, I think it's important. You lean on each other, you talk to each other, you you learn to trust each other. And um, and, you know, um, you know, the history of those who have come before you so that you can, you know, um, build on those who have come before, right? So everybody that we've encountered today has done really incredible work um, on behalf of women and also the foundation obviously working toward that goal. Also, um, all of that is great and, and um, necessary, but also um, needs to be built upon. Keep going, you know, just keep going. Um, somebody gave me that like a little uh, keychain thing that said keep going. And I think about that every day, just, you know, um, as a woman, you just keep going. That's that's where we've sort of been led, but um, there's something to that because what you're doing matters. Essentially, what, whatever you're doing matters. And it might just be chipping away too, right? Because 100 years ago, we didn't have the right to vote. So we've, we've gotten further, we're just not there yet. And we certainly are not, and we still have a long way to go and we have to continue uh, the effort. And I don't wanna use the word fight, but um, the push forward for women and uh, for for all groups who are being discriminated against right now. I think it's a collective um, approach. We we have to support one another. We have to work hard and we will make um, we will make progress. But progress does not happen unless we really work. One of the things that I've learned as I've gotten older and during this pandemic, um, I generally never think about age or discuss it uh, with anybody, but we sometimes have to reinvent ourselves, meaning we have to do new things. We have to take on new uh, careers and and be creative. And I don't know if either of you want to discuss that. We have about three minutes left, um, but I think that's important too, because as as our world changes, our our career options also change with this pandemic. The things I used to do, everything basically changed dramatically. I was home like everyone else. And if you I want to discuss that, I think it would be interesting. I think that's a great point, um, Jean. I think that um, as humans, we're always evolving anyway. Um, but I think what would, what's important for a woman is to, um, as we change, be very visual and very out there and very sort of um, public about the way we've changed so that some of the things that we do that because you're too old to do that or you can't do that. That's not, that's not right for you. Like, um, you know, if you decide at some point later on in your life that you want to go back to school or you want to pick a second career that feels like it's a young person's career or whatever, do those things so that there becomes a model for someone younger than you to, and it becomes more normalized so that um, we start to see images of people who are um, not the traditional expectation of whatever the career path or decision or whatever it is that you're doing because because that's how change happens. It's like those Dove commercials, right? When they show the people who, who um, it, it, body types of all different sizes. When those commercials first came out, people were like, oh my God, she's so fat, she's so this. But that's what people, this, these are real people, right? These are, these are real life examples. And so that's not just limited to the way we physically look at our bodies, it's, lim it's, it's also, um, you know, our age, because guess what? Nobody's getting younger. It's like the dumbest thing anyone's ever heard in ever. It's, it's, 
people don't get younger, they only get older. So ignoring that part of of our natural human lives is absurd. It's absurd to hide these things that naturally forget, progress in our lives because we think we're, we look too old to do that. Says who? And that that means just being more visible, right? Just be more public about the things you're going to do. If you if you decide, Gene, maybe you know you feel out of your out of your box because you haven't done this in the past year. Who cares? Because guess what? You're doing it, and here you are. So what difference does it make? We have about a minute left. Um, Kristen, do you want to add? Sure. Um, you know, I think it's important that, you know, so many women don't say their age. I know when I turned 50, I, I put it out there on social media because I said, we all have to start celebrating and stop saying 50 is new, 30, whatever. 50 is 50. I'm 52 now. I'm going to be 53 next month. Let's talk about and celebrate our age because you know what? The alternative isn't all that great, right? There's only one alternative to not having a birthday. So, you know, that's that's it. And the other thing I would say is um, you had asked what we were planning to do next chapter, and I, I can't really say too much, um, but the five of us are all working on a project that we're very excited about that we can't wait to talk about. And we really hope will help women, especially it could help men as well. But uh, and we're going to use a lot of collective women's voices to get that done. And so we're, we'll ex hopefully share that in a couple months. Uh, that's very exciting, and I can't wait to hear. And uh, just from a personal level, I wanted to add that during the pandemic, I switched. I, as I said I'm, earlier, I served on I serve on seven charity boards. Hopefully, going on an eighth and maybe even a ninth this summer. But I started hosting a local a TV show called Successful Philanthropy during the pandemic, and. Um, it's now, it airs in East Hampton, uh, South Hampton, and then Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Of course, I'm not on a major network right now, but I'm really enjoying what I do. And I love the opportunity to give other people a platform to talk about the work they're doing in the area of philanthropy. And I've interviewed people like Anna Oliveri, Kerry Kennedy, um, U.S. Uh, Representative Carolyn Maloney, Nandavi Mandela. And I only bring all of this up because we're always evolving. And so I say to all the ladies on this, um, in this chat room right now, believe in yourself. Don't let anyone ever put you down. Believe in yourself. You have the ability to do almost anything, but think big and don't let anyone tell you you cannot because you can, you absolutely can. And so as we end, I wanna thank all of our ladies who joined us, our women and our men. Today, I want to thank New York Women's Foundation for empowering women and for the radical generosity of all of our participants. Thank you to our honorees. You've been amazing. Amanda and Kristen, you're both great. I can't wait to hear your new plans. And to all of those participating, remember, get out there, do what you have to do. If you have to change your career, you do the best you can. New York Women's Foundation is here to support you. We are here as a group, a network of women who want to help other women. And of course, if you want to donate now, or you want to donate tomorrow, every single donation is acceptable. You want to give a million dollars, that's great. If you want to give a hundred, we'll accept that too. If it's only five that you can give right now, we accept that also. And remember, you can also volunteer with the foundation. So there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of things we can all do to support one another and to move forward. Thank you very much. And I'm hosting this. My name, Jean Shafaroff, and We've had two great guests, Amanda and Kristen, and uh, congratulations on being honored. And I'm super excited to hear your plans for the future. Thank you so much, everyone. We really thank appreciate you. it. Okay, thank you. Bye.